goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. I realized it was that time. Um, it's currently 11.10 where I'm at. And um, it looks like it's about that time, Pat. What say oh. you? What's your clock say? Yeah, you know, I think my, you know. Because I'm dropping like, popcorn every damn well. My clock is like one minute behind. It's like 11.09 or something. I don't know what's wrong. But either way, either time, okay. wherever we are, no matter what universe we're at, somewhere is synchronized at this moment. It is time for the good and fuckery. Let's go! Good and fuckery! Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. So, what was that shit that they said? It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. <laughs> I don't know why, but that should be in my head now every time I'm editing. It's time. It's time. It's time. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Episode 39, Good and Fuckery. We're going to start it off with the fuckery. This, this fuckery, he is one of our Black kings that has started a lot of trends, a lot of trends that are, uh, uh, has uh, uh, started off a lot of fuckery, good and positive, um, and sometimes fully negative. Big fuckery. Draco? Yeah, big Draco. Oh, for big real? Draco. You won one thousand points. Yay, one thousand. Yo, if this was a trivia competition, yo, I would have just won. Yo, I, I literally was just guessing that shit. All right. Welcome to the Good Fuckery, and I'm your host. Juan Great clues Pata. you just gave. One better. All right. So, Soldier Boy one better has reportedly gets offered to fight Aaron Carter in a boxing match. I can see that. That, that makes random. sense. The weight as class know, and everything, like that looks like I can see that. That makes sense. As you know, um, earlier, I believe this year, Aaron Carter was fighting uh, Lamar Odom. He got beat the fuck up. Oh, uh, yeah. He, it, was, it was tragic. It was so tragic. But, beat the uh, fuck up. Yeah, uh, Soldier Boy, uh, celebrity boxing has reportedly reached out to the She Make It Clap rapper to strike a deal. Um, Soldier Boy may be entering in a boxing ring very soon, going head to head against pop star Aaron Carter, not to be related to Sean or Dwayne Carter, because <laughs> he's white. He's, he's white. No, that's Nick Carter, oh, brother. Other dude. Yeah. yeah, the bam. Was it bye bye bye? Oh, I want it that way. One of them, Nick. One of them damn the one pop songs I never listened to. So those yeah. backseater Anthony, I can't ever remember. There's so many of them. Outside of Justin and uh, JC, I get lost. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to uh, bring this up by saying, uh, "This is what Soldier said." Aaron Carter, whoever the fuck you is, <laughs> the crank that rapper said in the video. 75 million records later, that's who I am. I know you be pulling numbers too, though. But but everywhere I walk, there's millions. What's good? I see you boxing and training and doing all that shit. Talk all that talk. It's okay. Meet me in the ring. You know what, what will happen there. Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Soulja Boy about that. Yeah. Soulja Boy's about that. Uh, I think it would be entertaining. Um, I hope he don't come out with that stance he used when they when he said Big Draco ain't from the hood. Oh, that stance he got in that day, boy, that shit looked like he gonna get his ass whooped. Rip shit that all this time behind the scenes, he been taking boxing lessons and boxing classes, and this nigga's on the Golden Glove level. It'll be some amazing shit, some trip shit. He come out there and do some some shit ain't nobody never expect. You want to put some money on it? Hell no. <laughs> I got my money on Aaron Carter. So uh, he's actually I, I been mean, training already this I, year, so he's I, used I, to I it. I never put money on my soldier boy for nothing. Now, if you bet me that soldier boy gonna start a new trend this year, yeah. you got me. Yeah. But on some fighting, 
Aaron Carter that already been training this year. His he's more in fighting shape. And I feel like in a fight where they're so closely matched, experience is gonna be the main factor. Like they both gonna be sucky at fighting. They go, they're gonna, they're gonna be horrible. But I feel like it's gonna come down to who's more experienced. So yeah. I don't think it's the fight even gonna happen, man. I think it's gonna be all cap and so the boy ain't gonna go through with it. That's a high possibility. But it would be fun. And you get punched in the face, and all of a sudden you see him do sushi boy. I said it all wrong. Oh God. Oh God. On God. If they fight, he could do it. On God, if they fight, I will do a play by play. Like I will do a live stream that night and just give you play by play. All right. On oh, God. I got you. Um, yeah. So yeah. Big Draco. I, I, one of the top the, the fuckery off. She make that. it clap, clap, clap. That is a catchy song. It is a catchy song. And the dance is so simple that everybody could do it. it Soldier. It, when it comes to marketing these goofy ass songs, he is a genius. He is he is a freaking genius. Anyway. Um, next on the list. Uh Colin Kaepernick is getting a, a show about his life. Is Colin in Black and White. It's a series about the life. Colin Kaepernick premiere on Netflix. And uh, yeah. Like a, t- like a show show or like a documentary type show? It's going to be like a scripted show. Okay. And um, I don't Ava really want to know about his life like that. Yeah. But um, Ava maybe, the, that. maybe the past How you say five her name? years. Is, is it Ava? Uh, I can't say her name. Ava Duvernay. Duvernay. All right. Yeah, she's directing, so yeah. But um, I don't care enough about Colin Kaepernick, to be honest with you, but I still want it to happen because it's been, I just want more black stuff on TV because it's been plenty of documentaries and scripted TV shows of other people I don't care about. Anyway, it didn't look like me. So I'm glad you I didn't make me even out. Because I definitely feel like I want the show to happen. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I want that to happen for black folks. Like I like the fact that we're getting black content out there. Beautiful. But um, yeah, I don't care about Colin Kaepernick that much. I personally don't care about Colin Kaepernick at all. His actions and what he did, right. I care for. Yeah. But the person and his background, I care not for. I, I the said, cause I, is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Because him as a day, person was born as shit before, before I heard about that call. He was just a regular he was just a regular football player before the knee. Yeah. Like, he yep. was gonna do another background story on a football <laughs> player whose only highlight in his career was the knee. So what are you Well, I won't say on? that he took the 49ers to the Super Bowl or something like that, did he? Against the Ravens. Uh, I'm not he sure. did. It was a, it was when the lights went off at the Super Bowl. I remember that game. Mm. Probably the one that went back. <laughs> it was right after the 49ers had beat uh, the Falcons. But really, think about it. Without the Neil, would he have this show? That's true. No. no. I, I just feel like um, as far as a scripted show or whatever about your life and everything, um, maybe a quick documentary, okay. But like a, a scripted show, I feel like you you haven't lived life long enough to have, like, women, um, uh, Jackson's American Dream, that, that miniseries or whatever, I, like that was a scripted show. I can understand that as a show or whatever. Like they, like they went through serious dramas or whatever that like were crucial enough that you can have like some type of like rising point or whatever, a drama or whatever, and then you know a climax on almost every episode or whatever. But with Colin Kaepernick, I just feel like all right, he's gonna be a guy that lives in the suburb. 
And then he gets scholarship, and then he goes to the NFL, and then he felt like saying something. That's it. No, I feel the same <laughs> way. Uh, I feel like if they focus the script to show, like a script to show, the beautiful thing about it is a year can be like three, four seasons. You feel mm-hmm. me? So if they do it like that and they focus on just the years from when he first decided to go this direction with it, or maybe even a few years before, like just his NFL life, I'll take that. Like his NFL life and his post NFL career, I'll take that. But if they try to focus on like when he was growing up, him being a teenager, shit, like I don't give a fuck. And I don't, I mean that in the least disrespectful way as I can mean it, but I don't mm-hmm. care. I honestly yeah, just uh, don't. I think um, well, well, they do have some aspects. He was an adopted child of a white family, and they get you know mm-hmm. that that dynamic or whatever that could. We could do that, but like, oh man, like if it was somebody like a like a Denzel or Samuel Jackson or somebody like that's just had prominence for a long time in media or whatever, then I would probably be into like a scripted show about them. Shit, Chris Rock, right, right, <laughs> right. You know, but yeah, like everybody hates Chris was dope because. Chris Rock had put so much of his life into his work already. So you kind of felt like, okay, cool. I'm getting a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes of what he was doing when these stories that he was talking about. Yeah. I don't know shit about Colin other than he mixed. I don't care. I know you probably I got no gun to know school. His, 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 his high school lunchroom stories was not a part of his meal or his platform that he got big on. Noah wasn't a part of his football story that I, like, I don't care. I personally don't want to have no show about no football player. I really don't. There's so many other people you can make a show about that has had a profound impact on society that's still alive, but you chose this. Like, stop giving tokens, motherfuckers. Yeah, man, give me a whole bunch of money and make uh, make a show about me. How about that? I'll take it. <laughs> I'll give you something interesting to watch. <laughs> whole lot of money. Matter of fact, uh, Jeff Bezos, all that money you gave to Van Lathan, bring that over here. Let me in. <laughs> invest that here. Oh, yeah. I'll like this. If you want me you to cry on TV, I'll cry on TV. You want a real reality show? Follow a homeless person. Do they like? That's a real reality show. You feel me? Then give them that money that you would give to the real actors you put on these so-called reality shows that you take different takes and and set up scenes and shit. That's not reality. You're setting them up in situations for this to see how they act. Reality is what it really is. Everyday life reality. Mm-hmm. So we want real reality. Follow motherfuckers who really go through shit. That's the life motherfuckers want to see. You feel me? If you look at interviews, people, the highly rated interviews is for people who live a life that people are interested in, people who do lives that people or that never will experience. You feel me? Like the, the, the rarities. That's what you need a reality show on. Not no scene set up shit. Reality. Camera. Raw. Like whatever motherfucker is doing, he's shitting in the streets. You got that shit on camera. This nigga, wow, he's shitting on the corner. That's reality. But make sure you give him that, give him percentage of that money and that revenue you go get from that too, because that's real too. Yeah, all facts, no email. You don't see no goddamn Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, that I, they could have picked a better subject for that like I would have actually cared more about the Eric Reed story than the Colin Kaepernick story they did pretty much the same thing Mm -hmm. but just nothing about Colin Kaepernick's upbringing (laughs) that I've heard about says ooh that's gonna be interesting nah nah, not really I didn't know really know nothing Mm -hmm. me I'm not a sports head so I didn't really know nothing about him until the damn deal anyway so they could have gave me the Rome better story before they gave me a Colin Kaepernick story. 
I take that. Well, I, like I said, the Padawan story is here. If you check out there, Jeff Bezos, you can put it right on I Amazon the Prime. I think the bomb Shit. Matter of fact, speaking of Jeff Bezos, what you said, face? Lisa? I I say I'd take a Bob Sap story before Colin Kaepernick. If you know who Bob Sap is. Negro, use a damn fool. <laughs> if y'all out there who listen, if you don't know who Bob Sap is, go look up Bob Sap goofy ass. <laughs> he is goofy too. He it is goofy it. as shit. He's like Terry Crews on steroids. Oh my god! And Terry Crews is the worst. Matter of fact, Terry matter, Terry Crews is always on the wrong side of history. <laughs> on the wrong freaking I side. I can agree of with that. Like you know that debate. Like I, I don't know. Maybe he heard that we said that he's like a lap dog for like like white white people or whatever, or whatever, and just been running with it. But you know that debate about. You know, with celebrities like Jake Gyllenhaal not washing up every day and everything, and whatnot. So he yes, has- but they don't wash their feet or they pick days of the week to actually wash on. Yes, yeah, yeah, they so, nasty asses. So <laughs> Terry Crews, he of course wants to um, tweet about it, and he said, "What he say? He said, if you're not sweating, then they need to wash or some." Sh- some mess like that. I was like, you always nigga, did. what? What you about did. dead skin? What about like touching stuff and getting germs from other things on you? Oh man, I put, I, I put it like this. I'm gonna go back a, a few episodes to basic male hygiene. When you pee, ninety five percent of people don't pee correctly. Even though you stand up and peeing, you're peeing in the hole and you're hitting the water. You may even wipe up the, the piss that hits the toilet. And you may shake. But you shake it and immediately put your dick, excuse me, penis, back in your underwear, boxes, breeze, whatever you choose to wear. And then you still have one or two trickles. And that gets on your underwear. But you choose not to wash that. You better wash your private area. As your mother used to say, every damn day, if you have a bowel movement and you don't wash your anus, you nasty. Mm-hmm. You you got ass chips in your bed. Regardless of how well you wiped your ass, it's still ass chips in your bed if you don't wash your ass. And you <laughs> shit in there. Nigga, did you say ass chips? Ass chips. Same Frito Lay. It's your fucking ass. It's your ass lays. Hygiene, people. You can't pick no damn day of the damn week. You better wash your ass every damn day of the damn week. Sometime during the day. Some, some, just, just. Do it every day, like, at least. <laughs> it's you know, like said it ass chips, everybody yo. else. Like, just he like, said ass chips. God damn it. I don't know if that was funny to anybody else but me, but it was funny as hell to me. This nigga said ass chips. That's just nasty. <laughs> that is nasty. Like, You're get dirty, get bitch. Chips. But that's not the first time I heard of. I was watching this mo- this um interracial couple show, right? Where it was an interview with interracial couples on just different things about each other they didn't know. So they was asking each other about hygiene questions. It was a black dude and a white girl first. Just like, how often do you shower? He was like, every day. She was like, um, and he looked at her. <laughs> She's like, I wash my top every day, but I wash my legs every now and then. <laughs> He's like, what you mean you wash your legs every now and then? <laughs> it's 
like you don't need I don't need to get my I don't need to wash my legs. My legs don't get dirty. I I don't do nothing with my legs. <laughs> He's like, ew, get your leg off me. <laughs> Oh man, when well, worlds collide, worlds collide. Yeah. <laughs> you dirty leg, bitch. Oh shit. What was that dance? <laughs> Stanky oh, leg. <laughs> but just think about it, man. In that dating world, when you don't live with your partner, you don't know their hygiene regimen. <laughs> you don't. Well, why do I keep to my goddamn self? <laughs> Motherfuckers, it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Before I, before I forget, because I kept bringing up Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos is suing NASA because he wants to go on the moon. And he feels like they're like holding up his progress, pretty much. Just all up into it. I don't know. I just like, I, I just like hearing about space and his bald head ass is just beefing with NASA. Like, who the fuck beefs with NASA? <laughs> so, you know, I like this. I like this situation a lot. Hold on, 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 hold on. Can you repeat that one more time? Jeff Bezos, um, matter of fact, I'll just say the whole thing. Jeff Bezos, space company Blue Origin, is suing NASA as the flight escalates, uh, as the fight escalates with SpaceX over a lucrative moon landing contract. Just, Has anybody um, ever sued NASA? Exactly. Exactly. He got much bread, but I like the situation because of the the various conspiracy theories about the moon landing and the moon and why we haven't revisited the moon as we landed the first time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if they do allow Jeff to go up there, either one or two things will happen. Either there's some up there that was the reason we didn't go back up there that's going to fuck Jeff up. <laughs> or, <laughs> or Jeff going... That's not it's funny. That's horrible. Man. But it was, like, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> like what? Or Jeff gonna land, and it's gonna be just like we saw it on TV, and it's gonna shut up a lot of conspiracy theories saying it was fake and all that shit. You feel me? Because I mean, you know, he gonna have it televised if he go to yeah. the moon, like everyone else did. I mean, you know, it's gonna be all. Yeah, they had the space dick on TV the last time. You feel mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it, this is big. I mean, I I hope he do does win the lawsuit and they do allow him to go to the moon. Let it let it's crazy. He want to go, let his ass go. You can't violate that man right. It's like driving somewhere. You, you can't restrict space on him. But he got no space. He got no money to go. Let his let his crazy ass go in the space. Damn let right, him let his ass go. Because right I Tuesday. tell you who got two let thumbs that ain't going. Let him go. Let him go. Let his ass go. I, she, I used to want to be an astronaut. Let him go. As a little kid. Let him go. As a little kid. And I don't want to go up there no damn well. Let Jeff crazy rich ass go up there. He's wealthy enough to go up there. <laughs> Let his ass go. And if his ass lands on the dark side of the moon, Lord forbid, whatever's over there, hopefully Jeff make it back. I and just he can make it back. And the good stories. Some crazy alien monster on the moon or whatever. It's just too stupid to think of technology to come to Earth. It's just, and it's just stuck up there, pretty much. I just hope that, I hope it's something like that. There's also I mean, a big ass this. rock. So it ain't even like it's like vegetation up there. This is a big ass rock. Like who the hell wanna live on a rock? But I'm assuming time, aliens would still wanna have some fun. They try living on a damn rock. Yeah, but at the same time, if it's like a lower like species or whatever, and it's, but it has the strength to live on the barren moon. So a water bear. And it's, and it's just there. Or whatever. So a water That's bear. scary. Like that means they don't yeah. really need anything. We like, got I'm, water bears, nigga. They can do that. And we got yeah, it right now. I'm just saying, what if the water bear is bigger than these little microscopic water bears we're talking about? So you're talking an inch. <clears throat> I'm talking about our size or bigger 
and it's bigger and it's able to like sustain itself on a barren rock in space. Just well, chill. rest in peace, Jeff. Thank mm-hmm. you for Amazon. I mean, people don't think about that because it's not really one of the common things to think about. But like, when you go to the moon and you find something there, and my name is Jim. and it's a threat or whatever to you, and it just never made it to Earth. That means that it's been living on the moon for like a long, like extreme long time, and somehow still surviving off of something on the moon. <laughs> But it has when, never met a human, though, so it don't know what I can I'll do. put it like this. Think, just think about this, though. With all that money he got, right? He chose to go to space. All that money. Instead of exploring the vastness of the ocean and the bottom of the ocean floor, which we still have not discovered a whole bunch of. Ain't uh, we've been to the ocean. moon before. Ain't we've been to the moon before. The ocean. You feel me? Go fuck with that. That's the real discovery. That's the that's the real nigga no. right there. There's too many PSI on your body per square inch. And he got enough money to invest in whatever technology you need to do. I put it like this, man. Jeff got enough money to do it, man. He got enough money to put the whatever together that he need to. It's technology out there to do magical shit that we don't know about. I know I wouldn't fuck with it. got enough money to do that shit. Do that shit, Jeff. Don't keep flying your ass up there. Stay on Earth and do some shit underwater. Jeff Smart. Shit. Jeff Smart man. say, hey, he going to go, he gonna go I know I ain't never swimmer. seen no animals. They got shit in there that they got shit. Like, if we go too far down into the water, we blow up because of the pressure. And they got animals down there that can live through that. Uh, no, I ain't mess with them demons. Nope. And we know it's animals down there. It ain't we guessing it's animals. Like, we guessing it's some life on the moon. We know it's some bullshit down there. Oh, no, Everything yeah. we find out there I'm good. is some ugly looking <laughs> evil. I done looking. seen them Pat, them Patrick Cloud, Pat Geo videos. Hell no, nigga. Mm-mm. The random shit he done found. I'm good. I don't need to see nothing else. Mm-mm. It let me know I need to stay in my house and let them stay in there. And we ain't gotta visit each other. <clears throat> so, um, I'm gonna go to some good right quick. Uh, quick good stuff out the way. I ain't um, fucking with no damn octopus ass chips. <laughs> Release the kraken. I just want to use that my ass. Ass chips. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> let's see. Illinois ban uh hair uh hairstyle. Ooh, Illinois. Illinois. Oh, Illinois. Yeah, Illinois. They ban hairstyle discrimination. Um, black youth in school settings shouldn't have to be restricted by outdated and often racist dress codes. State Senator Mike Simmons. Just putting that out there. I like. That. Uh, so uh, next, Muhammad Ali's grandson scored a two-minute debut knockout win while wearing a pair of trunks given to him by the boxing goat. Nico Ali Walsh, a grandson of the boxing legend Muhammad Ali, uh, defeated Jordan Weeks by technical knockout in his professional boxing debut on Saturday. Okay. It's in the blood. I'm assuming it's in the I'm assuming it was a cakewalk fight anyway, but I that's respect probably. the fact that <clears throat> Ali got a, a family member that's carrying on a legacy after Layla retired. Um, Na- Naomi Osaka pledges to donate her tennis prize money to aid Haiti earthquake victims. I swear, hey. Haiti always having an earthquake, man. And hey, that, black and Asian people. It's crazy. Is Naomi Os- Osaka okay? Is she well? She don't seem well. Mm-hmm. Like, I know she's sensitive, but her breakdown at this recent press conference got me a little worried about her. I feel like I feel like it's more going on in the Olympics than what meets the eye. Because mm. it's just way too much, way too many um, mental breakdowns and stuff just going on lately. Like, 
I don't know what it yeah, is. And I, and yeah, I, yeah. we the Olympics at this time. Because huh? I don't keep up with shit. We're the Olympics at this time because I ain't keeping up with them. Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, yes. Tokyo, Japan. Ain't it, 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 it a whole different set of, of rules over there? Uh, uh, that is that. Is, is that um, when you're doing you it, it shit. there's always you custom. doing press and shit now. I mean, I look at it as as the way things are covered now and the way winners are so uh, so called winners are publicized and put on the spotlight and given this given this put their put on a podium per se. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the pedestal per se. Um I feel like a lot of people aren't brave for that. You feel me? Like they want to be great and they ask they can just play the sport great but everything comes along with it. They don't mm-hmm. anticipate that. <clears throat> so that that's a they big strain on people. Glory, but not the fame. You feel me? Like not even the riches and glory. They just want the glory of winning. You feel me? Like they want to play their sport and that's it. They just achieve the higher goals than they ever could expect and they were like, I'm gonna keep going as high as I can. And that fame and everybody in the stage and all the microphones on the camera, like some people that stage fright shit as far as performing. That aspect of performing right there, when you gotta do the interviews and you gotta do that post press conference, that and that press conference, that pre press conference, all that shit can get to you. You feel me like I definitely I understand. Can understand. I can definitely understand when it comes to the anxiety about that and that become affecting the performance and all that shit. Definitely can understand that because a lot of people ain't brave for that. And then you got people like Serena and them. They was brave for that. You feel me? Everything mm-hmm. that came with it, and they they was built for that. They was trained. For I don't that. know Serena yeah. using that cream and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like the Olympics on the low might be doing the same thing Hollywood be doing on the low, man. Just the same thing, the same type of pressure, same system. Yeah, especially, know. I mean, I think it all balls in the, the, a lot of coverage and how things are covered and the amount of coverage. I feel like how the, the progression of media, social media and all types of media. Because if you look at the Olympics, Two Olympics ago, we didn't have social media, the social media presence we do now. You feel me? Like, that is it wasn't out of, it was just the news coverage, and you had what was on the sports channels. And that's what you saw. But everything is heightened now. Everything is drilled down. Everybody has an opinion of everything. So if you want Olympics and you got a bad hair day, you got a percentage of the, pop- the population is going to drill down on you just because of how your hair was when you're trying to perform the sport. Which ain't even a, right. a big concern when you out there trying to win and somebody drilling down on how you, your 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 appearance. You feel me like that ain't what you out there for. You out there yeah. to play the game. <laughs> but nowadays, with social media, regular media, and just the news, not just covering news, news covering the dumbest shit about everything. You got newscasters commenting on dumbest shit about stuff now. So I mean, it just it it, it puts people in a in a space in a real negative space when. They just want to go out there just to perform their sport, and that's what they love to do is just play a sport. When all this extra media coverage and shit should really be about it, because in a lot of other countries, I mean, outside the Olympics, a lot of other countries, their their sport coverage ain't as heightened as the Americans is. Mm-hmm. But on, on, the, on the Olympic scale, now it's like everything is Americanized times ten. Mm-hmm. So if you won't deal, if you couldn't deal with it just on a regular level here back home, on that scale, you're going to break. I mean, it's hard to say, but hey. No, that's real. I think um, <clears throat> I think there's definitely a lot of credence to what you said as far as the scale and the scope of things like increasing during the Olympics. Um, I wonder, is it just overall fame culture in general, though. I feel like it's the athletes have been more publicized recently because of the Olympics, but I feel like this is something that we're seeing with entertainers and all of that. Like, I feel like it's been going on. It's just the, the athletes are more publicized about it this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, even back when Britney Spears cut her hair off and stuff, cut her hair off and stuff, like, Celebrities been losing their damn mind for a minute. Like, what the hell happened when you become a celebrity? Like, 
It's, it's, it's the culture of celebrity, man. Like, like, we've experienced it on a small level, but <clears throat> I wonder at what point of celebrity does it cross over from you just being famous and people knowing you and stuff to the point where your mental health is now involved? I mean, I think it boils down to how you carry yourself and how much you put yourself in situations as far as where you go and how much you're involved with paparazzi. Feel me like you take a person like Don Cheadle, famous. Well, you don't hear shit about Don Cheadle. You, you, saw that, Don Cheadle. you saw that interview, didn't you, Space? That yeah, Don Cheadle. Damn right. <laughs> hard, hard you Cheadle. That, I was yep. just talking yeah. about it. It's hilarious. You don't see that motherfucker. You don't see that motherfucker nowhere. Mm-mm. You see him? But this nigga been making movies and been making movies. He got bread. He, he got that big bread. You feel me? He got that big bread. He was in Rosewood. <laughs> oh, yeah, I he, forgot. Damn. <laughs> I forgot. No. I never forgot he was in that. Don Cheeto got got some got some movies under his belt, man. Uh, Rwanda. But you don't never see Don Hotel Cheeto. Hotel Rwanda. Hotel Rwanda. Yep, that was a great movie. He got some movies out there. Even even on the singer, even on the singer tip, you look at people like Chris Brown who put himself in multiple multiple situations. But you look at somebody who's also from around the same area, Trey Song. You really don't hear about him that much. You heard him once, once or twice in the media on some negative stuff, but you really don't hear him. He keeps his head down and he moving. You feel me? Like you could be rich and famous and still not be in the limelight. Mm-hmm. And still get your money. Still get your bread. Still be popular. It's all about how you carry yourself and how you move. And, and, and as I was always told, it ain't about what you do. Is all uh, sometimes it's about who you do it with. You feel me? So, I mean, you can be going to the club, but you got negative eyes on you because of the, the crowd you surround yourself with. So that brings a negative situation to me. You, you got to know how to move when you got money. When you got money on a certain scale, you got to move extra light because the eyes on you is always somebody watching, always somebody listening regardless of how much money you got. But when you got money on a larger scale, you got that many more eyes on you, that many more ears listening to what you do or what you're saying, just in case you slip up. Man. Yeah. You got to move carefully. No lies detector. Oh, you end up looking like R. Kelly. Well, no, R. Kelly did that because he's messed <laughs> up. Uh, speaking of which, motherfuckery. Um, he uh he goes to trial this week for the sex cult. Good. Just putting that out there. Next, <laughs> what is he going to trial for? What 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 is, what is he going to trial for? This Bane the Gavel say uh, is announced the shit that Bane the Gavel again guilty and put that nigga back. Like, ooh, come on, man, be real. Pull up to the different. court, play the tapes, and then roll out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because our, our Kelly's fuckery has, uh, that, that kind of started off like our ODU days, pretty much. <laughs> walk that nigga out. Oh, walk what? that nigga from the back Just to the court room, but turn him right back around, walk him right back in the back. The when that, that said, first, no, nah, not you. I was saying that first, that first tape, when they came out, like, I remember everybody on the door. Did you hear the R. Kelly tape? You seen the R. Kelly tape? Oh, so, you're saying it came out, like, around the time when we were at the Yeah. Video. Boy, I thought you, I was like, what? No, oh, no, no, It's not no, like no. what we were doing. No, it won't. No, Don't no, no, no. shit on me. No, I ain't talking yeah, about, no like, music and stuff. I'm talking about the, the, when it came, that 16 that came out, and everybody had it on their computers. They had computers. I'm with you now. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. seen that? You seen that? You seen that? No, it was everybody weird. talking about that John. I had it. It's crazy. Crazy. He ain't that lady booty off for like 35 minutes. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. They went from there. So this week he's um then he looked over at us from his American Music Award. <laughs> with a with a Zorro mask. Hey y'all. It's me, Robert. Yo, he almost, yo, when he said it wasn't him, I was like, yeah, maybe it was look like, because I was used to arguing with the bald head. That nigga had the cornrows and was sitting there. This nigga, 
He could have got away for the with call? it if he stayed in the sexual position. But when he came over to the camera in that office and was like fixing the camera and shit, and he put his face that close, I was like, baby. nigga, you are zooming yeah, in on your face. Oh, it's definitely you now. If I had a doubt, you didn't clear it. You didn't clear it up all of the distortion. You didn't, yeah, you didn't fix the exposure. Oh yeah, that's you, Robbie. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, that that's this week. And um, uh, to end up the good and fuckery, uh, another versus popped up. Um. Damon Wayans wants to challenge Dave Chappelle to a com- comedian version of Versus. And I love Damon, Damon Wayans. Um, mm-hmm. You know what, though? No. That's an argument there. It, it comes down to the Versus format and the... Like, because Dave Chappelle stuff takes so long to heat up, he don't have as many like quick hits like that. Uh-huh. This shit is more like a long builder where I take you on this narrative ride, and then the end of that story is a first line. Whereas David Wayne, he got like yeah, but close, if you ever quick, seen 20, the, hit. if you ever seen Dave Chappelle host something, he he's good with those like. Those quick goofy moments, those quick jokes. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, but I, I feel like Damon, he got some they it is when I first hear it, like when you first hear that, right? Mm-hmm. There's an immediate thought of Damon Wayans don't stand no chance. It's fucking Chappelle. Mm-hmm. But then when you really think about it, it's not as far fetched. As you think, like Damon Wayans mm-hmm. is actually one of the top stand-up comedians as well. So, like, hey, he ruled. He, he, he got he some had a good reign for a long time, right? In the night. like he, he was jokes. big. He he was big when like Dave. I'm pretty sure that was one of the people Dave Chappelle looked at. You know, coming exactly. up, exactly. So like now you now it's like all right are we gonna see a big brother moment almost pretty much but mm. but it's mm. definitely it's it's some shit there though <clears throat> like it it ain't as far fetched as you might think off the initial just hearing those names yeah yeah but um uh, yeah so that's the end of the good and fuckery. Um, All right, the good and the rap. So.